morning good <clears throat> good morning good morning I'll give you a few seconds to hop on as you can tell I'm not pastor Ken um, filling in for him this morning he is out of town hanging out with some family taking some time off so asked me if I would uh, share a devotional with you guys this morning and and uh, looking forward to it. Thankful for the opportunity to, to share with you guys from God's word this morning. And and uh, if you want, feel free to join me. If you have a Bible in front of you, you can open up to Exodus chapter 3. Just want to share a quick, quick encouragement to you, to you guys this morning. And again, I'll give a, <clears throat> a few more moments just for people to hop on and while I drink some coffee. time to <clears throat> switch my calendar my wife every single year she gets the uh for christmas she buys me this little desk calendar so there's our our uh daughter reagan my wife mel our daughter reagan when she was uh i think she was five months old there it would have been because we moved here in march it would have been January, February. Yeah, she would have been like five, five or six months. No, four, four or five months. So, this little baby, this little baby. But tomorrow, tomorrow is March first. Wow, already March. That is crazy, and uh, pretty neat actually. Speaking of March first, um, tomorrow is actually. My wife and I and our daughter Reagan, it's been a year and it's our year anniversary, exactly a year to the to day tomorrow since we moved here, uh, since God brought us here to St. Joe to to be a part of what he's doing here, a part of grace and the community. And um, I don't know if you, for you guys who know me, uh, maybe you can attest to this, but for me personally and for my wife, it feels like it's been... Uh, it has flown by this year has gone by very very quickly and and a lot of that we had, we uh simply give credit to the lord obviously but uh to the community here that he's provided for us and for you guys who have who have introduced yourselves made yourselves um known to us and and uh gotten connected with us it's really helped uh tremendously with us adjusting here and it, it I'm sure you guys know it's a big, big, big decision, big move uh, for a young family. And um, we definitely couldn't have done it with, without you guys. So we're so thankful for you. But but yeah, a year, a year of being a part of Grace here, uh, the local church here, and, and being able to <clears throat> be called here has been such a privilege and such an honor. And and I, I talk about it often because a lot of people, a lot of people still to this day since, you know, for the past year, <laughs> I probably get a comment like at least once a week when someone hears that we came all the way from, from beautiful, sunny California uh, to the middle of the country, St. Joseph. And people ask, well, you know, what, what happened? <laughs> why, why did you come here? Why, what, what, what brought you here? And frankly, um, I, I, I don't know what to say, but say God brought us here. And, 
it's been kind of cool because I've been able to kind of share a little bit with uh, people who are uh, uh, strangers or unbelievers out in the community and, and share about how God brought us here. And it, it truly was. God has God called us here to St. Joe to uh, be a part of what he's doing here uh, and what he's what he's wanting to do here. Um, and obviously to minister to the youth and to see the need that was there. Um, but it has been, it has been a privilege, uh, and an honor truly. Uh, and I'm, I'm very, very excited. Both my wife and I, we are really excited for, uh, what God is going to continue to do here in, uh, in and through the body here at St. Uh, at Grace in, in St. Joe and, and really excited to be a part of that. Um, but I mean, it kind of, kind of goes into what I wanted to share with you guys this morning, um, when we when we talk about opportunities that God clearly presents to you and I, <clears throat> He's not gonna, as we know, He's not gonna, you know, pull our arm behind our back and, and force us to do these opportunities. But but He He presents to us the the opportunity, uh, oftentimes as as followers of Christ, and whether they be small opportunities or bigger opportunities. Um, he, he presents these things to us so that we may respond in faith and trust him and, and say yes to the opportunity that he presents to us. And, and, um, that's, that's kind of what I can attest to for, for how God brought us here. Truly it's, he, he called us here. We, we trusted in the process because, uh, we trusted him in the process because we had no idea what was going on. <laughs> um, and all along the way he has provided for us. He's been so good. Um, and he has made abundantly clear to both Mel and I that we are supposed to be here. And, and so no, absolutely no regrets, um, to, to responding to, uh, the call of God to, to come here and to, uh, to minister to the people here. And, and, um, yeah, we are, we're thankful to be here, but, but I think we see this example, um, in the life of Moses as well. And, and many of you, many of you know this story, but if you want to read with me, I just want to read, uh, just a few few verses from uh, Exodus chapter 3. And so you can follow along with me if you'd like. Um, many of us, again, know this story, know, know this story well, but I want to I want to take just a few uh, uh, things to note here from uh, the responses that Moses gives uh, God when he presents this opportunity to him to be used by him to go to Pharaoh and to <clears throat> rescue the, the people of Israel from the oppression of the Egyptians. So uh, just just a little bit of background. Obviously, in, in chapter 3, we, we see Moses. He's, he's tending to the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law. And um, he is shepherding. Uh, and then we see that the, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a, in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. We see God presents himself in uh, in the form of a, a burning bush, as we know. And there's this exchange a little bit here, and we, we see Moses, uh, he goes in and, and, and takes a look at it, and um, the Lord you know, responds to him, Moses, Moses, and Moses responds, here I am. Verse 5, he says, do not draw near to this place. Take your sandals off, for the, feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. So, so I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from that land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey to the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me, and I have seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppress them. And so this is where, where God presents the opportunity to Moses. He says, come now, therefore, in verse 10, I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And so... In Moses' first response, and this is what I want us to take take notice of this morning, verse 11, he says, Moses responds to God and he says, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, that I should bring the children of Israel 
out of Egypt. Moses is saying, who am I? I'm just, a, I'm just a shepherd. I'm just a man. Who am I to go to Pharaoh as a lowly shepherd to the, the king of Egypt, the, the, the one who rules over all of Egypt? Who am I to go to him? And then God, of course, responds and he says, I will certainly be with you. And this shall be a sign to you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. And then Moses, again, we see his second response. And he says, indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, the God of your father has sent me to you. And they say to me, what is his name? What shall I say? So then Moses says, okay, well, okay, how are they going to believe me? What, what do I say to them? What do I say to the children of Israel when they ask me, who sent me? And then God, of course, a famous verse that we know, God responds to Moses and says, I am who I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. And um, so far we've seen two responses from Moses. He's, he's kind of giving these rebuttals to God and saying, okay, well, who am I? Okay, I'm, you know, I'm just a man. I'm just a shepherd. And then he says, okay, uh, what do I say? Uh, who do I, who do I say sent me? And that was his second uh, response or his second opposition. And then <clears throat> thirdly, um, let's see, we go down to, is it, heed your voice. Let's try my hand. I will get the people favor. So then we go to chapter four. And in verse one, Moses answers and responds to God. And he says, but suppose that they will not believe me or listen to my voice. Suppose they say the Lord has not appeared to you. So again, now thirdly, we see Moses, God is, is, is presenting this opportunity to Moses. And he's saying, I will be with you. This is what you tell them. This is what you say to them. Uh, this is who you tell them sent you. And then Moses is now again responds to God and says, but suppose that they will not believe me or nor listen to my voice. And suppose that they say the Lord has not appeared to you. And then that's, of course, when, when God says, uh, what is in your hand? And he show, gives the rod and he says, you're going to use this rod to show my wonders and to show my glory so that it would prove that I sent you. It, val it would validate that I sent you. And uh, there's just this exchange where God tells him, you know, he throws the, the rod on the floor and then he puts his hand into his coat and he just, God is just showing Moses, Hey, this is, I, I will give you, uh, I will do signs and wonders through you. Uh, and this will validate that I, I sent you. But then we see Moses's fourth response. And this is his fourth opposition to God in verse 10 of chapter four. Moses says to the Lord, Oh, my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither before nor since you have spoken to your servant but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. Moses simply says, I don't speak well. I am not eloquent. I can't uh, put my words together very well. I'm not a good speaker. Um, I, I can't do this, Lord. I, 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 there's, you, you should choose someone else. Essentially, the fourth opposition he's saying, the fourth response. And I love, I love what the Lord responds. And the Lord responds to him in verse 11. He says, who has made man's mouth? Or who makes the mute, the deaf, the seeing, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with your mouth and teach you what you shall say. And then, at the very end, God is, is, is clearly promising, uh, promising Moses that he would be with him, that he would empower him, that he would do the signs and wonders through him, that he was sending him and that he was going to be with him. And Moses just flat out says, it says back to God, Oh Lord, please send by the hand of whomever else you may send. And we see in verse 14 that the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And then this is when Aaron is introduced and, and Aaron now comes and is used as well. But the things I want to, to, to really take note of here is, is from these responses of Moses is that the Lord here clearly presents an opportunity to Moses to be used by him to go to the people of, Idri uh, people of Egypt, the, the king of Egypt, and to, um, 
to allow him to let let his people go, to let the Israel uh, Israelites go. And out of every single response, Moses is, is saying, uh, out of the opportunities that are given to him, he's saying, no, he's coming up with these excuses. And I don't know, I don't know about you, but every time I, I read this story, I always think, wow, I, uh, I definitely have been like Moses at many times in my life where God has clearly presented an opportunity to me to be used by him, promising that he would be with me, promising that he would empower me, promising that he would equip me for whatever he's called me to do. And yet I come up with these excuses. Oh, Lord, I, I'm, I'm just a, I'm just a man. I'm, I'm, I'm no one special. I didn't, you know, I didn't go to, um, you know, a four year college or, uh, you know, I'm, I'm only 26 years old or I come up with these excuses of, oh, you know, I've, I've got something more important to do. Uh, or, you know, maybe someone else will reach that person. And, and I've, I've personally come up with these excuses myself and I have, and I have offered these excuses to God and, and the opportunities that he has presented to, to me as well. And I think that is just our, our natural human nature. We, we, we sometimes think that, um, you know, who, who would God use? Like, why would God use someone like me? Right. But I think the thing that we would want to take away from, from this story and from this example of Moses is that when God calls us to do something, when he presents an opportunity to you and I, clearly he is going to empower you and I and equip you and I to accomplish uh, that what he's called us to do. Uh, we simply must take a step of faith and respond by saying, here I am, Lord, use me. And the reason I wanted to share this with you guys today was because as Josh has shared as well and and uh, me personally thinking about thinking back to this full year of us being here, it really caused me to think, you know, God has brought me here for a purpose. And I, and I know that. And I'm not saying that I'm anyone special. But what I'm saying is that I really believe that this year God wants to do something really, really good. And I believe that he wants to um, send us out. As an op as a community, as a church, into the community to reach those who desperately need the hope of the gospel, and there is there are plenty of opportunities that God will present to you and I if we are ready for it. If we just simply will keep our eyes open and see uh, the opportunities that are are presented to us, and that we would respond in faith, that we would trust God, that we would just say, "Here I am, Lord." use me. And if you're simply willing to take that step of faith and to trust him, he will use you and he will empower you and he will equip you regardless of who you are. God wants to use you in the world around you. And, you know, like Moses, we see God's grace clearly seen as well, right? Although he uh, offered these rejections or these oppositions to God, God still used Moses in this whole process. But we can't help but think that um, maybe Moses missed out on more of the, the blessing of simply just saying yes and trusting God uh, to be used by him in an even greater extent and of course, God is going to accomplish what he's going to accomplish no matter what, right? Because Aaron comes in and God uses Aaron as well and Moses as a, a team. But um, we can't help but think that maybe Moses missed out on on the, the bigger blessing of being used by God in even a bigger way. Uh, and so we don't want to miss it. We don't want to miss the opportunities that, that God presents to, to you and I daily. Um, and I would encourage you even today, just spiritually, spiritually keep your eyes open to the opportunities that are presented to you uh, on, a, on a daily or weekly basis uh, to extend the love of Christ to not only, of course, our own church body were to do that, were to care for one another first, were to care for the household of God first. But 
also in reaching the community around us that is lost without hope, uh, wandering away from God and needs to be brought into uh, his sheepfold, into, into his flock. And so pray for those opportunities that they would come your way and just take a step of faith. Trust him that he would empower you and equip you uh, and uh, would be with you uh, each and every step of the way. So hope this encourages you guys this morning. Uh, there's a lot to learn from the life of Moses, of course, but um, we love you guys and we're, we're super excited. I, I, as I shared before, Mel and I, my, my wife and I, we're very excited to be a part of what God is doing here at Grace and are really uh, expectant to see him work in and through this church body uh, to to reach the community around us, and so uh, just be just be ready, be willing, be flexible, um, and just be available for how God wants to use you. So, love you guys. Have a good rest of the day, and we'll see you Sunday.